snake bites. Now there are different types of snakes all over the world and while deaths from snake bites are extremely rare, snake bites do happen and every one of them should always be considered a potentially life-threatening emergency. So here in the UK we actually only have three types of snakes found in the wild and only one of them, which is the adder, is the venomous snake. Adders, um, they're kind of grey or reddishy brown with a dark zigzag, zigzag shaped stripe all the way down their back. We also here in the UK have grass snakes, they're usually green with like dark spots down their sides and sometimes yellow and black bands um, around their neck. And then we have the smooth snake and these are usually kind of grey or brown with a dark pattern but as a pattern goes down the back, it becomes lighter and it becomes less zigzag shaped than maybe what you find on an adder. But that's here in the UK. Do you know what type of snakes you have in your country? Go on, pause me now and just Google it and see if you know the types of snakes you have in your country and are you able to identify what they look like? Now the reason that I explain the different types of them is because telling the doctors the color and the pattern of the snake could actually help the doctor treat them or treat the character accordingly. So let's have a look at the treatment for these snake bites. First of all, we need to get help for the patient. So call the emergency medical services and get them to hospital as fast as you can. We need to make sure we stay calm because if we're not calm um, or the character is not calm, the heart rate will increase, which will increase the blood flow, which can pass the venom around the body faster. We need to keep the bitten part as still as possible. So lay the casualty down, maybe in the recovery position if possible. Try and identify the colour and the pattern of the snake to be able to pass that information over to the doctors. If you know, but not everyone is aware that we've been bitten by a snake. We might just feel a small bite, but we don't know what it is that's bitten us. So if we know what it is, try, to de try and remember the colour and the pattern on there. Try and take off any jewellery and loosen any clothes near the bite. Take the watch off and the ring off. You obviously don't need to take this off if it's the foot, but loosen any tight clothing because all that's going to happen is going to swell up. And then what would be a good idea would be to draw um, a mark around where the actual bite is and write down a time as well as record how you're feeling and repeat that every 30 minutes. Because the vast majority of snake bites can actually be diagnosed and treated by your symptoms and severity, especially important if you don't know or you didn't see what snake bit, um, bit you. So identifying how you're feeling and how fast the venom is moving through the body can actually um, help the doctors work out what it was that bit you. Now there are some common signs and symptoms of a snake bite um, that a casualty might start to feel. So these general signs and symptoms tend to be two puncture wounds, two small holes. That's where they actually bit you. There might be swelling and redness around those wounds, pain as well at the actual site. Then we might also have difficulty in breathing, vomiting and also nauseous. The vision might become blurred and we might start to sweat and salivate. There might also be numbness in the face and the limbs. Snakes also have, different types of snakes also have their own individual signs and symptoms associated with it. So make sure you're recording how you feel and let the doctor know when they're treating you. Now that's what to do. I want to just cover what not to do because there's lots of myths out there. First and foremost, do not make it worse. So do not go near the snake or try to catch it or kill it. Please don't do that because you might have two bites then to deal with, which is obviously going to be a lot worse. Do not try to suck or cut the poison, the venom out of the bite. Do not give ice to the casualty because if you put ice on the wound, it will cause the smaller blood vessels to constrict, which can produce dramatic tissue damage faster. It's a lot better to allow the wound, the bite to swell up and get them to hospital quickly where you can get the treatment straight away. Do not tie anything too tightly around the part um, of the body where the bite is. In other words, do not apply a tourniquet because restricting the blood flow does keep the venom from spreading, but that's exactly what you don't want to do. 
because if the venom stays concentrated near the bite, it's going to rapidly destroy cells. Whereas allowing it to spread will dilute the toxin and likely reduce the tissue damage. So don't tourniquet. And don't give the casualty aspirin or ibuprofen, as this can make the bleeding a lot worse. On the internet, you'll find lots of snake bite kind of kits. Please don't go buying them. A lot of them will include things like electrocuting yourself, cutting um, the snake bite out, sucking it, suction devices, lots of strange and wonderful things out there. Please do not follow any of those advice. And please follow the advice we gave earlier in the video. No first aid is often less harmful than bad first aid especially when it comes to snake bites. So please remember that. Now, after saying all of that, there are special considerations for neurotoxic and lapid bites. Now, the following technique is only going to be performed in the event of a known bite from one of these neurotopic and lapid species, and it should never be formed on snake bites that are not part of this species, such as the rattlesnake. And the type of treatment we're going to be talking about is applying a pressure immobilization bandage. Now, this is only for these types of snakes. And if you're in doubt, you are not going to use this method. You would use the treatment that we just explained before. Now, the types of snakes we're talking about that are neurotoxic lapid snakes are things like the non-spitting cobras, the mambas, coral snakes, sea snakes, and actually everything in Australia. So if you've been bitten by one of these snakes, then you're going to apply a immobilization pressure dressing. Because what one of these dressings will do, because if you've got a bite from one of these leopard snakes, which possesses really potent neurotoxins, it leads to death much quicker than a typical snake bite. So a pressure mobilization bandage can delay the actual spread of the neurotoxin poison, the venom, and it can buy enough time to get to hospital to get that emergency treatment. So if you, be, if you are 100% positive you've been bitten by a neurotoxic snake, or if you're in Australia, then you can apply a pressure mobilization bandage. I'll explain how to do that now. Just remember though, you're not going to use this for viper bites. And I also want you to remember that a pressure mobilization bandage is not a tourniquet. And a tourniquet is not a substitute for a pressure mobilization bandage. A tourniquet is never ever appropriate for any type of snake bite. You also need to remember you cannot take it off until you've got to hospital where they've got the anti-venom ready. Because once it's removed, there's going to be a massive surge of venom into the bloodstream and it can cause a rapid decline in the patient, leading to death, really. So this must be carefully done in a controlled environment with doctors such as the hospital. So what we we'll do, we'll apply a broad pressure bandage from below where the bite is and upwards um, as soon as possible. If you've got clothes on like trousers, you don't take them off. You leave the trousers on and you apply the bandage from the bottom all the way up and go as high as you can go. You don't want to remove the trousers because by removing the trousers, you're going to move the limb and you want to keep that leg, the one that's bitten, as still as possible. Or well, the same with the arm, if it was the arm that was bitten. You want to put enough pressure on there that you would do if someone had sprained an ankle, for example. And you want to prevent any unnecessary movement. And as I said, go as high as possible. When you've put the bandage on there, then you're going to apply a splint because you don't want them to move that leg. But remember, these are only for those specific types of snakes that are found in all of them in Australia and the names of the snakes I mentioned before as well. And if you're ever in doubt, do not apply it. Just seek medical help really quickly because you can cause more harm than good because if you just keep all the venom in place, it's going to destroy the tissues and cause massive tissue damage. So. Do not apply unless you know what you're doing. And if you don't understand what I've just said, do not apply, just seek medical help quickly. So let's have a quick recap to make sure you remember what to do. So the most important thing to do then is if someone has been bitten by a snake is to call the emergency medical services and get them to hospital because the sooner a victim receives medical treatment, the less time 
the venom will have to do damage to that person. And don't forget, if you haven't already, make sure you research the snakes that you have in your country so you're able to identify them quickly if you were ever bitten by a snake or somebody else that you know. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted to all of the new videos.